Welcome to Tai Chi, lesson number two. Good to see all of you out. Everybody ready? Let's warm up. Hands at your waist, turn your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stretch your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Expand your chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Waist exercise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Airplane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Touch toe. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your hips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Be careful. Kick your foot. Shift your weight to one side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kick your butt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Heisman, open hand cross stance, parallel feet, choose one side, cross and hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Short one, one, two, three, four, five. Other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now we're going to practice being on golden cockerel, remembering that in Tai Chi, being a golden cockerel, standing first on its left and then on its right, takes some balance, takes practice, but they are definite movements along with our kick out with our right, as well as our kick out with our left. And over time, we'll have better balance because of more stamina, understanding your muscles and your body and how it operates, and of course, through a lot more concentration. Okay, so safety measures now. First, we have our good Tai Chi posture. Good Tai Chi posture means relaxed shoulders, middle finger to the sides of our seam of our pants, our chest is sunken in, our butt is tucked under, our knees are relaxed, however not flexed because there's no um, energy expended yet, our chin is not parallel to the tile of the floor, but slightly dip in, slightly dip downward, but our glance is way ahead of us. And our silver silk thread is holding our head erect, not favoring the front or back or the sides. Our tongue is on our palate. We're going to shift our weight to the left, bringing up our right hand to help center, left hand by the side in a cock position. Opening up our span a little bit more, shifting our weight, centering, counterbalancing, tucking our butt. Down, golden cockerel, stands on its left, tuck your butt, down, up and center and counterbalance, down, center up, Down, center, up and counterbalance, tuck your butt, down, shift your weight, up, down, shift weight, up and counterbalance. Right hand on the outside as we shift our weight to the left, right foot coming up, kicking out in line. Down, left foot, left hand up, kicking out in line. Opening up our span, right hand, right foot up, kicking out. Left hand, left foot up and out. Right hand, right foot up and out. Left hand, left foot, up and out. We learned that in Tai Chi there's definite alignment, alignment of our feet, our hands, and our bodies, include our body as well as our head, neck, torso, hips, and, sh and waist. Okay, so we learned three or four different Tai Chi um, stands. One is the T stance. So in, in me describing a T stance, you're forming your T, T stance also. So the weight is heavily on your right foot. The, the capital letter stem of the uh, T has hardly any weight and you're on your toe. And put our hands at our hips, okay? And practice our form first. We're going to come out and to the side. Out and to the side in one motion with our left foot. Out and to the side, L stance, flatten it out, stretch out the back knee of your right foot, O stance. Sit back all the way, twist step because you're on your heel, 
Shift your weight to the left. T stance. Out and to the side. L stance. Flatten it out. Make the adjustment in the back. Bow stance. Sit back all the way. Pivoting on our heel. Shifting our weight to a T stance. Out and to the side. Flatten down. Make the adjustment in the back. Checking to see that our knee is not beyond our toes and our back right knee is straight out. And our silk silver thread is keeping our head erect. Sit back on our heel. Twist on our heel. T on our left, uh, right side. Heel out away from the back foot. Open the knees, rotate, stretch. Okay, this time I'm going to ask you to look to pick, concentrate on your hips and your waist. Twist step, and this is a T stance. You're going to put your heel down, and you're going to make your body, your hips and your waist turn so that when you are flattened out, both hips and waist are addressed to the left outward foot. Sit back, twist step. Your hips and waist again are centered and facing the left foot. When we come out and to the side, our hips and waist turn to make the movement hap happen in a bowl stance. And then you ask yourself, are my knee and my toes in line? Is nothing beyond that? Are both hips in line with my left foot? Did I forget to leave to take my left hip and align it to that right foot, rather, right foot? If so, you need to turn it so that both hips are aligned to the right foot or outward foot. That is proper alignment. When you sit back, everything comes back in that same alignment. Then you're allowed to twist and your hips now are facing the wall, even when you put your T together. When you come out into the side on a heel, you're going to move your hips and your waist, and you're going to make the adjustment in the back foot to make that knee straight. Sit back all the way. Twist step. Waist and hips face the outward foot. Square to the bricks of the uh, wall. T stance, L stance, shift your weight, turn your hips and waist, O stance. Good. Sit back. Twist step. Shift weight. T stance, L stance, shift, stretch, O stance. Sit back, twist. Shift, T, align hips and waist, L, move the hips and waist, stretch, O. Sit back, twist step, shift your weight, T stance, okay? So what we're doing is we're laying the groundwork to learn our feet movement um, very clearly and carefully because once this is um, gained and once you can feel that you can do it pretty much automatically, then we can add our hands. But if it's not understood and you add your hands to it, you're going to have two things that you're going to have to work on. So we rather lay the groundwork for the feet and make sure that everybody understands, make sure that you're safe, make sure that your knees are not going to get um, weakened by something when you're doing it wrong. Okay, so everybody's going to watch. Okay, so the explanation is, this is a T, I'm weighted down. Actually, I'm going to turn this way so you can see better. I'm weighted down. When we come out into the side, that is the perfect L stance. Out into the side is here. My hips and waist need to move to my outward foot and align to that outward foot. So... If I were to do this correctly, and I have it now so far correct, and if I only move my left hip and align it to my left foot,
but this right hip is still out here, that's not correct. So you need to get both hips turned and this way, okay? Because you're going to put more pressure on your knee when you don't want to have that joint uh, taxed, okay? So that's the focus there for tonight. You need to bring that hips and waist. Now, if you do not come out and to the side and you only come here because you want a safe space or energy or someone's near you and when you finally come this way you're locked in too much and you have very very poor alignment and you're going to say my knees hurt my my joints are giving me um, they seemed inflamed well sure because you need to come out into the side then make that rotation and address your hips and your waist. So, so I'll answer your question. There's only one place to go, okay? That's correct. And I think I've tried to explain to you from, were you here last, last week? So remember when we were on a tee, I said before we ever moved, I want you to come out and to the side. And I made you do this, and can you do it again for refreshing of your memory? I want you, you're in a T stance, I want you to come out and to the side. Is everybody using their hands to show me how I want your foot? I want you out and to the side. But I want you to do it in one motion. So therefore it has to come here. It cannot fall short of coming here because then you'll have the problem that I just described. So there is only one place in which to put that foot, okay? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's called out and to the side. That's my, my terminology. It's out and to the side. Back could mean here, and that's perfectly wrong, but it's called back. So it's out and to the side in that way. So now you might say to me, well, I'm really going to listen well because I want to do good Tai Chi. And you may say, she said, out and to the side, and you want to come out here. This is way too far. Okay, and I, I can't. So you need to not um, compact yourself, but you need not to strain yourself. So it's someplace comfortable that you can get that stand. And you're going to have to experiment with it, okay? So good question. It helps us to clarify where the foot is. It's very important because we want to stay safe. We don't want to ruin our, our knee joints, okay? Because those are the things that will go fast. So one side, out into the side. The other side, out into the side. Same terminology, same way of understanding, same way of doing it. Basic concept in Tai Chi, there's a thing called term substantial and insubstantial. This is in reference to your footwork. The substantial foot is the foot upon which you put almost all of your weight. That's your base. That does not move. But by shifting your weight and your balance onto the substantial foot, it allows for the other foot to move. So you do not move two feet simultaneously. If you find out that you're, you're doing one of these things and you double things, you, 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 you've done it incorrectly. It should be from here, substantial foot. This can go any place you want it and you set it out. Now it's time to move because you shift weight, get this substantial, then if you need to adjust, then you do this. You don't want to do one of these things and do that. That, that will be not good for your knees, then that's not good for, for basic Tai Chi. Tai Chi is you're trying to center your balance wherever you're going to be. You've, you've got it centered here, out here, turn, commit yourself so you, you're out this way, and then you do this, okay? Now, this is substantial, okay? But now I'm going to shift weight back to insubstantial. And all I've done, this is insubstantial relatively. Then I can move this. But you see where this foot went? No place. Then I shift substantial. Insubstantial, then I move. Okay, so 
not two feet at one time. You shift your weight nearly completely to one leg, then you can move the other leg. What Ken just explained to you is, could be many, many, um, many sequels, but the one that I think is of primary importance to us is the weightless foot is a foot or the insubstantial foot is the only foot that is allowed to move. But in Tai Chi, at a specific place, okay, a specific place, if you were to move both feet together, you're going to have not only joint problems, but you have more of a, a chance of falling. So if both feet are weighted and you're trying to walk fast, that's not going to work. But once you learn that in walking, a natural, a natural thing that you do, one is weighted down, it's holding your balance, and only then can you advance. When this comes down and it's weighting you down, this one can come up. But no one really thinks about it, but that's how you walk or should walk safely. And another thing about Tai Chi posture, what is it saying? Keep your head erect. And if you were to walk like this, somebody brushed by you, you're going to take a dip. But if you're upright, you can not only see, but you're centered. So all of what we're trying to learn about Tai Chi is definitely applicable to daily activities. But no one's going to really remind you. But if you practice Tai Chi long enough and understand your body, it will incorporate and kick in when you need it, hopefully. Okay, no guarantees. I would recommend you to practice a lot. And in practicing, you're not just getting better, but you're giving more strength and stamina to your muscles, your joints. And there's no better activity or exercise than Tai Chi, where all the time you're shifting your weight and you're holding the weight of one of your whole body on one foot and shifting at the same, shifting and then holding your weight. And because you're in a Tai Chi posture, which does not warrant locked knees, but a relaxed knee, you're always in a semi-squat position, giving you better strength and stamina over time, okay? All right, anything else? All right, so we covered all of that and we did Tai Chi posture, and then we went on to learn two movements in the Yang Ten form. The first one being commencing form, and the second, second one being, what are you doing? Repulsing of the monkey. So let's practice that and see if we can move on and take our third movement tonight, okay? All right, here we go. Good Tai Chi posture, sunken chest, middle fingers at the sides of your seam, good um, silk silver thread holding you erect, glance way throughout the um, wall, way out beyond the wall, tongue on your palate, butt tucked under, okay? Commencing form. Slowly drain the weight off of your left foot so that your heel can come up. You're on the sole of your foot, you're on your toes, off the ground, toe down, Sole down, arch down, heel down. Hands rotate to the middle of your middle of your thigh. Take a deep breath in as you elevate both hands. At shoulder level, you're going to reverse the process by dropping your shoulders, tucking your elbows, dropping your wrists, flexing your knee. Left hand centers your body while the right hand comes up higher. You're looking at it. You open both hands to the ceiling. You bring your back hand to your ear. You're turning your face. You're meeting both hands in the middle, sliding one forward, sliding one back. Centering the front hand, left hand up higher, looking at it, bringing it to your ear, turning your face with your hand motion, meeting in the center, sliding the top hand forward, bringing the bottom hand back. Try it for, um, for uh, experience. You're on a T stance. Get the T stance first. Left hand um, 
sort of parallel to your waist. Right hand up higher. You're going to brush your knee. You're going to bring your right hand to your ear. Practice first. Bring your right hand that's higher to your ear. You're going to multitask. You're going to bring your left hand around the side as if it were brushing your left knee. So what does the left hand do? This is my left hand. I sort of said parallel, but it actually takes a little, uh, your hand takes a little dip upward. It's going to brush your knee. It's going to come down and it's going to come around and brush your knee in the L stance. One more time. Down, out, around, tuck it to your side of your thigh. That's your left hand. Your right hand is higher. You're bringing it to your ear. Okay, do it with me. Bring it to your ear. Bring it to your ear. Left hand, bring it down and around to the side. Now do two hands together. Ear down to the side all around. All right? Don't worry about it. Just get the bigger feel for it first. We're on a T stance. Here we go. We're going to multitask. And don't forget, we're going to need to get into an L stance. Ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee. Sit back. Twist step. T stance. Get that first. Right hand parallel to your waist, left hand up higher. You're going to make an L stance. Out and to the side, bring it to your ear, turn your face, brush your knee. Sit back, twist step, T stance. Okay, so people are following really well and then, then I'm sure that you've um, run this across your mind, like, oh my gosh, I moved my feet, but I didn't move my hands, or vice versa, or you didn't end up the same way. So that's what's really interesting, fun, and challenging about Tai Chi. Lots of things are going on. You're just not stagnant in your mind. They're being, your mind is being stimulated. And as a result, you're trying to put your body to do that motion, and that's I think wonderful, okay? It's an easy way out if you didn't do Tai Chi, but I think it's a good way to keep your mind going, keep your body going, keep your health going by doing something that's very different. All right, so time to just watch and, and cool down. This is commencing form. Slowly drain the weight off. I open, my toes come down, my heel comes, my sole comes down, my arch comes down, my heel comes down. This is my rotation of my hands. This is my elevation of both hands at shoulder level. I reverse the process by making myself small, flexing my knee. The left hand this time centers my body, and the back hand, which is my right hand, comes up higher, and I open both hands to the ceiling. I bring my back hand to my ear. I turn my face. I meet in the middle. I slide forward and I slide back. I center the front hand. I open both hands to the ceiling as my left hand is higher. I'm looking at it. I bring it to my ear. I turn my face. I meet in the middle, slide forward and slide back. Then I said, we're doing the third motion, okay? So this is the T stance and this is the hand, the left hand that is sort of parallel to my waist, but it's not exactly parallel. And this is the backhand that's higher. And we said that we would multitask. So in multitasking, we do many things at one time, at the same time. One thing that's going on is that we're bringing our top hand to our ear, okay? The second thing that's going on is that we're bringing this hand that's parallel down and out to brush my knee. The third thing that's happening is that I need to get out of my T stance and move into an L stance. So all of those things are going on. So it's ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee. Okay, and if I were to do it this way, this is how you are, we're, we're doing it on a T stance. 
L stance, turn your face, brush your knee. The leg work, the footwork remains the same. Sit back, twist, T. This time the right hand is parallel, the left hand is higher. We do the same thing. Out and to the side, ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee. It looks very easy, but it does take a lot of practice since this is something I don't think anybody has ever experienced. Okay? And you, we talked about increments and we talked about how Tai Chi can uh, work for you if you take it slowly and if you're patient with yourself. Okay, so let's let's dig in. Um, let's start from the beginning. Okay, good Tai Chi posture. Commencing form. Slowly drain the weight off of your left foot. Your heel comes up. You're on your sole. You're on your toe. You're going to lift an open toe, sole, arch, heel. Hands rotate to the middle of your thighs. You're going to take a deep breath in as you elevate both hands. At shoulder level, you're going to drop your shoulders, drop your wrists, drop your elbows, flex your knee. Left hand centers your body. Right hand comes up higher. You open. You bring your right hand to your ear. You turn your face. You meet both hands in the middle. Slide forward. Bring it back. Center. Left hand is up higher this time. You're looking at it. Open. Bringing it to your ear. Turning your face. Meeting in the middle. Sliding forward and sliding back. Okay, ready for the challenge. You're on a T stance. Left hand almost parallel to your waist. Right hand up higher. Remember that we're going to multitask. Let's practice the different things that we're going to multitask. The right hand, the higher hand, comes to your ear. In, out, in, out. All right? The left hand is going to start to come down, out, and around as if it were going to brush your left knee. So here it's parallel. Begin. Down, out and around. One more time, parallel, down, out and around. Hey, but this top hand is getting heavy. It needs to move together. Okay, let's try that. T stands, ear, down, out and around. One more time, parallel, higher. Ear, down, out, and around, but something's wrong. Our feet need to move, right? It needs to move to be a natural movement. Otherwise, we are just standing here making our motion go, and it's not making sense. So we need to get back into our pattern. If we're on a T stance, we next have to do an L stance and a bow stance, okay? So we're gonna multitask. We're on a T stance, left hand parallel, right hand up higher. You're going to come to your ear, down, heel out on L stance. Turn your hips and waist to its par uh, address to your outward foot and you're brushing your knee. All right, one more time. T stance, right hand up higher, left hand parallel. We're going to move into an L stance and end with a bow stance. Ear, heel, hand, turn your face, brush your knee, bow stance. Good, everybody's ending up towards the field. Okay, so this is what you learned, okay, in, a, in another uh, position. This is your T stance, this is the parallel hand, this is the top hand. You're bringing this to your ear and at the same time you're doing this but you're also doing this. You're doing this together, you're turning, and you're, you're multitasking. And this is the bow stance. My knee is not beyond my toe, my back leg is stretched out, and I brushed my knee and ended my form. Okay? So you're saying, well, I don't know, my hand doesn't seem to want to go there. 
there are many different ways you can remember to get the whole picture. One, the top hand is out here like this, as if somebody were throwing me a ball and I'm going to catch it this way. And when I finish my bow stance, the person ran and threw the ball to my middle, to this hand here. So that's another way of looking at it. First I'm catching it here, then I'm going to catch it here. And this hand, it brushes your knee and holds the top of another ball. So all the time, your hand is rounded as if it were holding a ball or trying to catch a ball. You can look at it in that way. So that's a lot. And brushing your knee is one of the most difficult movements for any beginner of Tai Chi. So we're going to introduce it like we're doing now. We're going to make sure that we revisit, revisit, polish it up over time. So there's... It's a miracle if you could do this, the three movements by the end of this uh, second lesson and show me that you've accomplished it. It would be a miracle. But what we are asking is for something more real. And the more real um, uh, uh, opportunity would be to step into that goal to do everything. But like everything else, it takes practice, it takes time, it takes intake of knowledge and then incorporating it to make that movement. And after you get that, there's more refinement to do. And then we're going to have to get into that movement, move into another movement on the other side, and then we have to keep that, keep that Tai Chi movement going. So there are lots and lots of variables. Okay, so my job is to try to make it easy for you. Your job is try to bear with me and practice and then come back and then and fix it up again. Okay? Everybody following so far? All right. Let's let's start again, okay? The Tai Chi posture, tucking your butt, that's really important. Once you tuck your butt, your knees are are relaxed and your shoulders should be drooping and your silk silver thread is holding you erect. Commencing form. Slowly drain the weight off of your left. Heel comes up. On your toe, open, toe, sole, arch, heel. Hands rotate to the middle of your thighs. Take a deep breath in as you elevate both hands. At shoulder level, drop your shoulders, drop your elbow, drop your wrists, flex your knees. Center your left hand, right hand up higher, open both hands to the ceiling. Bring your back hand to your ear. Turning your face, meeting both hands in the middle, repulsing of the monkey. Center the front hand. Look at your back hand that's higher, open. Bringing it to your ear, turning your face, meeting in the middle, pushing forward, pulling back. T stance first. Left hand parallel to your waist, right hand up higher. What are the things that you're going to do? You're going to multitask. You're going to bring your top hand to your ear. At the same time, you're going to push down your left hand. But at the same time, you're going to bring out your heel to bring it out and to the side in an L stance. Ready? Go. Ear down, heel. Turn your face. Bring it to your side. Catch that ball in the center. Good. Sit back. Twist on your heel, shift your weight to the left foot, T stance, right hand by your waist, left hand up higher. What are you going to do? You know you want to get to an L stance, but you need to multitask. The left hand comes to your ear and the right hand comes down, as if it were going to brush your knee. knee. Here we go. Ear, heel, hand comes around. Brushes your knee, catches the ball. Good. Sit back. Twist on that pivoted heel. Left hand parallel on a T stance. This is a drill. You're going to multitask. Ear, heel, hand, turn your face, catch that ball, brush your knee. Very good. Sit back. Twist on your heel, 
shift your weight to that flattened foot on a T stance. Right hand parallel, left hand by your up higher. Multitasking. Ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee. Sit back, twist out. Left hand by your waist on a T stance, right hand up higher. Let's break it down. The higher hand is coming to your ear. Ear and it's turning and it's going to it's going to catch that ball in the center. Okay, with me. Looking at your top hand, bringing it to your ear, turning your face, catching that ball in the center. That's too awkward. The left hand has to do something. The left hand has to come down out and around to brush your knee. Do that for me, parallel, down, out, around, to your side. One more time, down, out, around, to your side. All right, so the right hand now is getting too heavy as well as our feet are getting too tired on that T stance. So we're gonna have to put everything together. What does your foot do? The foot comes out into the side on a heel and then flattens down. What does the T stance do? It takes you to an L stance and then a bow stance. All right, two hands and feet together. Don't forget your hips and waist, as well as your neck and your face. Go. Ear, heel, hand, face. Turn your face, meet in the uh, catch that ball in the center. Sit back, twist, step. Shift your weight to the left foot, T stance, right hand parallel to your waist, left hand up higher. Ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee, catch that ball in the center. Sit back, twist step, left hand parallel, right hand higher. Ear, heel, hand, face, brush your knee. Now I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Is your knee in line with your toe? If it's not, can you pull it back? Is your body not favoring the front? Is it still obeying the silk silver thread? It should be erect. Is your right or back leg is there no buckle in the knee? It should be straight to give you that good Tai Chi posture. Is your left hand to the side of your thigh and is it holding the top of a ball rather than relaxed and drooping? Is your right hand centering your body as if it were catching a ball about eye level so that the middle finger is about eye level? If so, sit back. Twist step, you know you're going to be on a T, and the right hand has to be parallel to your waist, and your left hand is up higher. Same thing. Top hand to your ear, heel comes out, hand comes down, brushes your knee, top hand catches the ball, right hand to the side of your thigh, knee doesn't go beyond the toe, left or back foot, there's a straight knee. Don't favor your front. Your whole body is held up by that silk silver thread. Sit back. Twist step. Shift your weight to the flattened right foot. T stance, right hand up higher. Multitask. Ear, heel, hand, face. Brush your knee. And you ask yourself, is that left hand still holding the top of a ball? Is my knee not beyond my toe? Is my right hand catching the ball in the center of my body? Is my back knee straight out? And most of all, is my silk silver thread holding me erect and not favoring the front just because I have a hand in the, front, in the forward position? If so, you can sit back, twist, Shift your weight to the left foot, T, parallel, right hand, left hand higher. Multitask, ear, heel, hand, face, 
Brush your knee. Sit back. Twist step. Hold your ball on a T stance. Okay. So I think you did very well. I can't see you, but I can take little glimpses of you, and it looks the form looks good. Just remember that um, you need to practice when you're in motion, and the hand now mo motions are relatively new or brand new. You're going to concentrate on your hands. And once you feel like you're concentrating on your hands, your feet start to do different things, things that I didn't teach you. So you're going to have to really discipline yourself and say, she said T, she said L, she said bold. And once you get that, then you're going to have to multitask and do it correctly. So the incorrect way would be then to say, I forgot to go out into the side and I will put my foot here and then I will try to brush my knee and that's too cramped for me and I won't fully do it. Okay? So there's several things to look at. It's not meant to be something so difficult that you just want to give up. I think it's at this point you're going to learn more about your body, learn to do something that um, you've never done before, and whatever you can give to it is an accomplishment. It is a stepping stone in which you can get better. But if you say, I give up because I don't like it, then, this, then there's no block to, um, to get you further. You're just staying at your same level. So I think it's very good to, to move into it and try to learn. And I don't expect you to be perfect. The next time I see you after practice, I think that I would still need to correct but you get the gist of it. You get to see the bird's eye view of it, understand it, and try to make your body move in that direction. Sometimes when we are teaching Tai Chi, it seems so mechanical and rigid. And you can, at least I like to use the analogy, when you're playing in a comic book or a workbook and you got this picture that says, Foot, fill in the dots, or join the dots. And when you finally join the dots, you got this sort of mechanical looking whatever they're trying to show you. But if you think a little harder as to what it really looks like, things round out. Okay? For instance, like brush knee. You're, you're taught to put this here and this here. And then come this way and this way. But if you watch, and if we go at a faster speed, this hand is doing this. Coming out, coming down. Guess what this guy is doing? This guy is doing this, coming this way, coming down. Okay, so what happens is if you go a little faster, you're, 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 you're bringing both hands here. This one's coming to the chest, but this one's coming up to the ear, and then it comes. So it's a little faster. A little faster, you get the sense of what's happening here. And you watch how my body is moving. I'm turning at the waist, and the hands come out here. And you come back down, and you come back here. Okay? You put the feet together. That's when you're, you're, you're here, you're balanced, but you decide from balance part, you put here, but this foot comes up, you're balanced here. And when you come out this way, this hand is this way, you're balanced here. Sit back. And then, because I want to go in this direction, and I want to be balanced, and I'm balanced here, come out. You see how foot leg, uh, footwork, body movements, hand movements, these things help you to get yourself into positions that, that uh, which you can maintain your center of balance by extending or contracting, but you're doing it fairly symmetrically, you're going in and out and in and out. And the movements, it's, you, you're sort of mechanically thinking, here, I gotta make sure I'm here and I'm over here, and then I can do this. But when you start to think about it, you're gonna ultimately want to be almost like a windmill. Maybe you can practice that just to get an idea. Go ahead, let's try this, okay? Do what you can, two hands are moving. Bring it in, coming out, 
you get a feeling that two hands work with two hands. Two hands are moving. Each got his job. Coming up to the ear, coming to the chest, coming out, blocking, pushing. Coming back to the chest, to the ear, coming back out again. Yeah. We go a little faster. And you get the sense of a rhythm. And you're going to go slowly. When you do your Tai Chi, you will be doing it slowly, but this is the ultimate movement. So, this gives me an idea. Okay, so what Ken was trying to tell you was that there's a um, there's levels of learning. So what I was teaching you was more mechanical: ear, ear, heel, hand, ear, heel, hand, uh, uh, heel, and then face. So what is he saying? In essence, what you're doing is you're spiraling. You're spiraling, and that's what makes Tai Chi. It's all about rounded movements. But in the beginning, we have to teach it somewhere. We have to start it.
that Tai Chi is very different. It's unlike any other exercise um, anybody has experienced. So that's the premise in which I try to make my uh, lessons um, more powerful. I, um, I try to keep a very positive atmosphere and um, doing everything in unison and, and um, doing it in the best way we can. You feel energized and seems like um, it's multiplied in you know, a group. Everybody's trying their best. It seems like everybody's stepping up a, a, a notch and the standard gets a little, a little higher. Um, I must reiterate that um, it's an individual journey. So um, people progress at their own speed and um, they have a, a lot in common. They're people who don't know each other but just through um, learning Tai Chi, you go for coffee. It's a real um, all-inclusive, all uh, very supportive group. Relative. We have an, a lifetime goal to learn Tai Chi or teach Tai Chi, and it's not something that um, we say uh, that it can be learned in a year's time, in two years' time. We don't ever give it a... Uh, a time limit in which we should learn. We feel that Tai Chi, as complex as it is, requires a lot of refinement. So you may learn the t 10 form and uh, remember all the 10 movements, but beyond that, you can always uh, refine those movements so that they're not only smoother, but maybe they're a little bit more graceful. But in our journey to learn Tai Chi, no matter at what stage you're at, you will probably feel very positive about your experience and, and already can feel the, the, um, all the things that are beneficial um, when you do Tai Chi within yourself. And sometimes you may not be able to put a, a point, a pinpoint the cause of it, but we always tend to like to think that it's probably because you've done Tai Chi.